Welcome to the Straight Red Card. This is Howard Cosell. This is the show where Brett occasionally wears women's clothing and Derek allows a trained monkey to shave his back. Gentlemen. Argument. Now, speaking of Hercules Gomez and the Champions League, um, he did knock Seattle out with two goals. Um, and I think you're being very nice when you say knock. Yeah, I mean they they kicked the sh- they kicked the living crap out of Seattle in that game. The 8 score scoreline is ridiculous. Yeah, it it's ridiculous. Yeah, it was bad. It was very bad. Um, and then unfortunately now 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 not only is Seattle out, but LA is out as well, and that leaves uh, one MLS team left, and it just right might be the best of the three actually. Um, currently, because there's one guy that's playing like a monster right now. His name's Torsten Frings. And Toronto look they actually pretty decent with him. Kervermans, um, they look like a pretty together team. Pretty solid. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I have confidence that TFC could, uh, could represent MLS well. Uh, currently with LA's uh, form, you know, we'll get, we'll, get into, we'll get into them a little bit more here in a second. But I, I'm not overly confident. They're leaking too many goals. They are. That's a big thing. Absolutely. And then Seattle just showed what uh, you know what the, their mo has basically been for the past couple of years. They're a good team that's wildly inconsistent. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, Seattle is a very talented team. They're they a very are. good team. They held they held uh, Santos to a two one uh, win. Yep. In Seattle. Yep. But then they go and they. Show up, or they did I don't even think they showed up. They didn't show up. So. Yeah, they played with no urgency whatsoever. The only guy on that team that really was seemed to be like busting his balls from the the whistle from whistle to whistle was Rosales. Mm-hmm. And Rosales, you have to give him credit. He is a fantastic player, and what a great find for Seattle. But the rest of that team, ugh, that was some bad stuff. They'll, they'll, they'll perform well the rest of the season, and they're going to be a contender. But as of right now, that that was just a shameful exit. Yeah, well, and as was in many ways, L.A.'s going back home tied with Toronto. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better setup than that. And oh, yeah. there's just something, as you mentioned, there's, and, and this goes for New York, too. There's something really wrong going on in both L.A. and New York right now. And these are your big super clubs. Now, Lewicki says, you know, for L.A., don't worry about it. But, I mean, we all know what the problem is, right? It's called leaky defense. That's the thing. You know, in the past three games, that's two games against Toronto and then the one against uh, Real Salt Lake, uh, L.A. defense has leaked in seven goals. Yeah. And not, not something, you know, you want your, you know, your quote-unquote top team, your contender team to really be doing and really be... Uh, no Gonzo, though. No, no Gonzo, yeah. And th- there, there's, there's another problem. If one player can be pulled off the, of the starting 11 and cause that much disarray, then there's an issue. Yep. Um, I mean, you have to have another option. You really do. And is the fact that if, if you remove Gonzo from the picture and all of a sudden they're leaking in, and on average, what is it, 2.3 goals a game yeah. for those three games? I mean, it, it, it's something that has to be addressed because you're not going to have Gonzo for the rest of the season, and it has to be addressed. Yeah. So, it's, well, it's, you know, they're still creating chances on in the attack. And that's the only thing that, as of right now, they can really hope for is that they score more, more goals than their uh, opposition does. Uh, that's, that's stating an obvious, right? Because every team wants to do that, but yeah, but they're they're still creating the opportunities. I mean, against Toronto, they hit the post a couple times. Uh, they had some close opportunities. Uh, the Toronto defense really was a uh, was a wall. Uh, I thought they did well against LA. Yep. So uh, it's just you know how it is. You yeah, know, it's early in the season. I, w- I really wouldn't look too much into these. Uh, yeah, it's too early, but still. Yeah, but still, it, it's yeah. something to concern yourself with. It, if you're New York and you're L.A., there are definitely things to be concerned about. I mean, when you look at um, the way New York played Dallas, I mean, let's go back a week. Um, I don't know if, I mean, an Agudelo said, well, I can't play up top by myself. Well, okay, I understand that. But if there was actually something actually productive coming out of the midfield for New York, then Andre wouldn't have to go back and play sort of a CAM spot, and sometimes literally as far back as playing a central midfield spot. <laughs> you know, but there's yeah. so little happening. In fact, I think Martino made a good call by pointing out that technically McCarty and Tania... 
Tannehill may as well have been one player. They were standing so damn close to each other in the first half. Um, and, you know, listen, I, I, I just have to say that, that it just seemed like to me Henri continues to bust his butt while everybody else watches him play. Um, and to me, that's sad. That's really sad, and I'm, I was glad, you know, and then Agudelo goes out in this game this week, and they don't even start Cooper. You might as well start Cooper, because it looked like Henri and Cooper worked better together than Henri and Agudelo. And then um, other things with New York, what the hell is wrong with Lynn Pierre? I mean, he looks so slow. It's like he lost, like they put bricks in his shoes this year. And you know what, uh, I, I, I look at that, the uh, Lynn Pierre issue, uh, and I see that basically as a, uh, a player who's still in very much in preseason mode. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to use an example of this uh, week, game this week, the Chicago Montreal game. I don't know if you did, were you able to catch that game. Oh yeah, it looked like Chicago was still in preseason mode. They were moving slow. They were passing slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just there was no urgency. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it's a wake up call. At least they didn't lose this uh, this home opener uh, for the expansion team. Yeah, you know they have they have a nice little record there. It was a one one, right? Yeah, huh? One one. Yeah, it ended yeah. it ended one one. Yeah. Um, but you know it's it's some of these players. You know, the first game or two, you know, you're going to see some rust still come off because a lot of the coaches don't take the preseason as you know they don't prepare during the preseason as they should. Yeah. You know, you saw some teams like Portland really focus on the preseason, really put harp on uh, the. You know, starting their players, getting them time to play together, and then you see LA, who came in barely playing their starting eleven in the preseason, and then they're, they're it's showing. It's what it's doing. Is it's mm-hmm. really showing. Yeah. So well, uh, it, it what that, that's just saying. That's what it looks like to me. Is that it's, it's a player that's still in preseason mode. There's players in preseason mode, and to me, it's also some technical issues. It's the way. Baca has New York lined up. I don't mm-hmm. think is right. I don't think McCarty's playing the right role, and I don't even know if he can play that role for this particular team in that fashion. And I may be that may be a little harsh on McCarty, but he's not looked that great. But then again, Tanio has looked not that great either in the center midfield. That's why Henri has to keep going backwards. As far as the Montreal Chicago game, a few things that stood out for me. Well, number one, sixty thousand pl- almost fans. Awesome. Oh, that was cool. That was great. But. Could they play it on a skinnier ass field? I mean, ah, you want to talk about the field? Let's like talk a, about the turf. Well, it's the turf oh, was horrible. The field they're playing on it looked like a, a a bowling alley. It was so thin. <laughs> I mean, they, they, that field must have had banana peels spread all across it. Players were were slipping left and right. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And, but you know what? Um, they, the announcers were talking about it. They asked the coach both both Jesse Mark. Marsh, oh. yeah, and uh, sorry about that. I really butchered that at first. Bob. Uh, Jesse Marsh mm-hmm. and Marsh, I did it again. Uh, <laughs> and Clopas, mm-hmm. they asked him, "What do you think of the turf?" And they both didn't answer. They didn't say anything about it because neither of them like it. The players didn't like it. It mm. was not a great surface to play on, and it showed. I mean, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's why the fire played so uh, as slow as they did. Maybe yeah. so. And I guess when you do, if you don't have your, they're taking the old advice from their mother that if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but they may have just you know made that field that way to in the kind of uh, in 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 tribute to Jesse Marsh. You know what I mean, Marsh. Anyhow, Marsh. yeah, like a bog. Anyhow, <laughs> the, I think. Fortunately, the, fortunately, we won't have to worry about that field because they're moving back to their exactly their stadium. It was temporary. Um, for the large number of uh, you know season opener and everything, so right? Break the record and all. Couple points about the game though. Uh, it was fitting, I thought, that Davy Arnaud uh, scored the first goal for Montreal, and you ask, well, why? Well, I believe Arnaud is a French name, um, and so in that way, I guess it was fitting. Um, Niasi, however, should have scored at the end there. I mean, he really. Oh, yeah. That was a point blanker. And then uh, my other question, you uh, maybe this is uh, um, some sort of a. Um, uh, I'm seeing things, but does Graziani not wear shin guards? Grazini, I'm sorry. To be fair, uh, I wasn't looking. <laughs> oh, I swear to God, I assume he... that they're all wearing shin guards, so I, I just don't. I don't pay attention to that. Man, I was thinking that guy's going back to the '70s with that style. I could did not see him, and his socks were low, and I figured hey, you know, no shin you know, guards, uh, socks low. You know, when I played, when I played, uh, especially like back in high school, 
I had the smallest, thinnest shin guards ever. Your mom I, was cruel. I, I never, I was never a fan of them. Of shin guards. Yeah, uh, shin guards. I always wore them. I was a midfielder, and um, yep, you had I to, always, yeah, you had to go under those slide tackles, you know. So, um, oh, I never, I never backed down from slide tackle. However, I witnessed a guy wearing uh, shin guards that could stop a bullet. Like they were <laughs> like, I swear to that guy, they had to be made out of cup. <laughs> He went, to, he went shin to shin with a guy that was not wearing shin guards in a friendly, and his shin broke in three places. Jesus. At that point, and the other guy walked away like nothing happened. After that, it was just uh, an eye opener. You know, shin guards are nice, they'll stop the nicks and bruises, but they don't do much of anything after that. Shin, I mean, shin bones are hard to break, too. Yeah. I mean, so, that's not easy. I, mean, I don't know if his bones were just unbelievably brittle or something, but still, it, it was an eye opener, and I really didn't care because if I'm going to get hit, I'm going to get hit. And yeah. Shin guards do that big of a difference, so. Yeah, what? Well, oh, that's a oh, nice little change. <laughs> One other point I wanted to bring up, especially with Dallas, because they they played well against New York. It wasn't mind blowing, mm-hmm. but you know, at the very end of the game, when um, in a tactical change, uh, they took off um, Benitez and put on George John to just have an extra defender. Did and, and Benitez wasn't even cool enough to come over to the bench and give. John a high five as he came in. No, he stomped off the field in frustration off to the left. Benitez, quit being such a pussy. All right. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I had to get that out. It really pissed me off seeing that, especially first game of the season. The guy's got to have that big of an attitude. Welcome to the straight red card. This is Howard Cosell. This is the show where Brett occasionally wears women's clothing and Derek allows a trained monkey to shave his back. Gentlemen, 